Logarithmic functions. Our objective is to write equivalent forms for exponential and logarithmic functions, as well as write, evaluate, and graph logarithmic functions. Why learn this? A logarithmic scale is used to measure the acidity or pH of water. We're all familiar with exponential equations. So how do we make the exponential equation become a logarithmic equation? An exponential equation, you have your base raised to the power of x equals some value. Well, to change it from exponential to logarithmic, we're going to keep the base of the power is going to stay the base of your log. So the base is always going to be the base. We're going to put a log in front. And now we're going to look at, oh, OK, well, we have our exponent and then what it equals. To make it a logarithmic equation, we're simply going to switch whatever you happen to have as your exponent with whatever you happen to have as your value that it equals. So from if exponential is b to the x equals a, your logarithmic would be log b to the a equals x. Let's practice. We're going to be converting from exponential to logarithmic form. So the base is always going to be the base. So the base of your exponential equation is 2. So the base of your log is going to be 2. So we have log base 2. And now we're going to switch whatever the exponent is with whatever it equals. So they're just going to switch places. Let's try this next one. To go from exponential to logarithmic. In the exponential form, the base is 4. So that means the log's base is also going to be 4. So we have log base 4. And now we're going to switch whatever the exponent is with whatever the equation equals. Try the next three on your own. Now that you've had a chance to try these next three on your own, let's see how close you came. So 5 to the 0 equals 1 is going to be log base 5, 1 equals 0. Let's look at this next one. So we have 5 to the negative 2 equals 0 0.04. That's the same as log base 5 of 0 0.04 equals negative 2. And then the last one. It's going to be log base 3. And then let's switch our exponent and what it equals. So we have log base 3 of 81 equals x. So that's going from exponential to logarithmic. What if we go the other way? So now let's try converting from logarithmic to exponential form. So we have log base 10 of 100 equals 2. So the base of your log is still going to be the base of your exponent and then you switch whatever you have the log of with whatever it equals. So your 100 and your 2 are going to switch places. So you're going to have 10 squared equals 100. Let's try this next one. So log base 7 of 49 equals 2. So therefore we have 2 as our exponent and 7 as our base. And that has to equal our 49. The base always stays the base. What the log is of and what it equals, they get to switch places. Try the next three on your own. And then we'll see how close you came. So this one would be 8 to the negative 1 equals 0.125. And for this one, we'd have a base of 5. So 5 to the 1 equals 5. And for the last one, we would have 12 to the 0 equals 1. Special properties of logarithms. 
Okay, so this is for any base b such that b is greater than 0 and b cannot equal 1. That should sound rather familiar. So, logarithm of base b. If your base and what it's of are the same, it's going to equal 1. So the log base b of b is 1. Log base 5 of 5 is 1. Another example, log base 10 of 10 equals 1. If you wanted to think of it as an exponential, we would have the base of b and then switch your 1 and your b. So you'd have b to the 1, well that equals b. So it kind of makes sense. And now if you have the logarithm of 1, so log base b of 1, it's going to equal 0. Think of it this way. Your base of your log to the 0 power, well anything to the 0 power is 1. So as, as long as you end up with log base whatever to the 1, it's going to equal 0. Let's try evaluating logarithms using mental math. Alright, when there is no base written for a log, it is assumed that that base is 10. So once again, if there's no base written, it's assumed that it's 10. So you can think in your head, 10 to the what is going to give us 1,000? Well, 10 to the third gives us 1,000. So therefore, the log base 10 of 1,000 must equal 3. Let's try this next one. You can think of it this way. 4 to the what equals 1 fourth. If you're having trouble seeing why we have this box here, think of it this way. Say this equals your unknown, because that's what you're trying to find. Well, when you switch something to exponential, it becomes the base of your power, and then you switch your one-fourth in your x. So 4 to the x equals one-fourth. So 4 to the what equals one-fourth? Well, 4 to the negative 1 gives you one-fourth. So this is negative 1. Because logarithms are inverses of exponents, the inverse of an exponential function, such as y equals 2 to the x, is a logarithmic function, such as y equals log base 2 of x. And when you graph them, notice how they're reflected across that y equals x function, so that linear parent function. Well, hey, that means that they're inverses of each other based on one of the previous sections we studied. See if this helps. Your exponential functions all, are all right here. That's your y equals x, and then your logarithmic functions are inverses of this. So when you have y equals 2x, you'd have log, y equals log base 2 of x. So once again, exponential functions and logarithmic functions are actually inverses of each other. So now let's look at graphing logarithmic functions. So we have the function f of x equals 3 to the x. And we're going to use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 for our domain or our x values for our original function. So when we substitute in each of those values, for example, when we substitute in negative 2, we end up with 1 ninth. When we substitute in negative 1, we end up with a third. 0, we're going to end up with 1. We substitute in a 1, so 3 to the first power is 3, and 3 to the second is 9. Well, to graph the inverse, we had talked about, well, hey, the inverse of something that's exponential use the logarithmic form, so the inverse would be log base 3 of x. But recall back, whenever you were trying to find the inverse of anything, 
you simply switched your x and y value. So let's just switch them. So your x value kind of becomes 1 9th, and your y value would become negative 2. So we're simply going to switch them. And then you can graph the ordered pairs, and you end up with something that looks as such. Try this next one on your own. When you return to the video, the answer will be revealed. All right, let's see how close you came. So we have f of x equals 0.8 to the power of x. So when we substitute in our specific domain values here, we end up with 2, 1, 0 0.8, 0 0.4, and 0 0.2. So to find the inverse of this, we're simply going to switch the x and y values. And now we can graph. So now let's try an environmental application. Chemists regularly test rain samples to determine the rain's acidity, or concentration of hydrogen ions. Acidity is measured in pH, as given by the function pH equals negative log times the quantity H positive, where H positive represents the hydrogen ion concentrated in the moles per liter. So now let's try finding the pH of rainwater for both of these locations, so central New Jersey and central North Dakota. So for central New Jersey, we've got 0 0.0000316 moles per liter. So to do this, our pH equals negative log, and then we have our hydrogen ion concentration. So we're going to multiply our log by our hydrogen ion concentration. And in this case, it's going to be our point zero 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 three one six. To do this, you can simply enter it into your calculator. So you're going to hit the negative button, and then there's a log button towards the bottom left of your calculator. And then simply type in this decimal. When you do, you get about 4.5. On your own, try the one for Central North Dakota. When you return to the video, the answer will be revealed below. So therefore, the pH levels of central North Dakota are going to be 6.0, or about 6.0. And that ends our video lesson on logarithmic functions.